So Patrick, we have another spacecraft that's flying around out there at Jupiter. And uh, it did something exciting recently too. And you have some cool pictures as well. That's right. Well, this is the Juno spacecraft. This is NASA's mission to the planet Jupiter. And this spacecraft has been orbiting Jupiter since July 5th of 2016. So it has done a circuit of the planet Jupiter in a orbit that is very elongated, which is shown here. The orbit is roughly about 43 days for Juno to go once around Jupiter. And at its farthest from Jupiter, it's roughly about 4 million miles. But then it gets close to Jupiter on a flyby. And when it does that, we call this the perijove, that arrow showing the closest point of Juno's orbit from Jupiter's cloud tops. That's roughly about 2,600 miles from the cloud tops. That's just very, very close. The reason for this is to gather very high resolution images of this large gas giant to show some of the very interesting gas dynamics are going on. Now, Juno has this orbit that takes it over the north pole of Jupiter, around the equator, and then it turns around over the south pole. And this journey takes roughly about two hours, all the while the instruments on board Juno are all activated. So it's measuring lots of properties of Jupiter from the interior using gravity measurements. There's also other instruments that sense the plasma fields and all that stuff. But it also carries a camera called JunoCam and has been providing us with very interesting images, so many that this is the 45th close passage of Jupiter. And Juno never disappoints every time we have a perijove and the images are posted on the Mission Juno site. So we're going to take a look at a sampling from this perijove, this is flying close to the North Pole of Jupiter, which is a vantage point that can't be seen from Earth, which is one of the advantages of Juno's orbit, showing some of the circular storms. Notice there's no banded feature that we would normally associate when we're looking at Jupiter through a telescope. Lots of storms, kind of bluish in color. This picture is color enhanced. Some of the details here show these incredible storms. There's storms everywhere, even ripples around the storms themselves. Here's another image, which was taken a little bit further down from the pole at a temperate latitude, roughly about 45 degrees north, showing a swirling storm with a brownish reddish center, which kind of resembles a great red spot, but it isn't. It's very tiny compared to the great red spot. In detail, this image shows some of the pop-up ammonia ice clouds, which are shown kind of in those little specks around the storm. This image was taken when the spacecraft was roughly about 4,300 kilometers above this particular storm. Now, something exciting happened, as David mentioned earlier, and that is that seven and a half hours before Juno encountered a perijo with Jupiter, it actually crossed the orbit of one of its large Galilean icy moons, Europa. And it actually intercepted the Europa moon and we look at this diagram here. This is part of the extended mission of Juno to do close flybys on the moon. The first one was Ganymede of last year. We saw some really interesting images close up. And then on this Perijo 45, Juno was crafted to fly by the moon uh, Europa. And in late this year and early next year, it will do a close by of the moon Io, which is Jupiter's volcanic moon. So this is very exciting. Every time it does a flyby of these moons, the time it takes to go once around Jupiter is reduced. So when it did a flyby Ganymede, the orbital period of Juno was reduced from 53 days to 43 days. With the flyby of Europa, that's going to go down to roughly about 33 days. So we're going to get uh, data once a month sooner, and the perigeos will occur each month. Just taking a look at what Juno was doing prior to its close approach of Europa. We can see that Perigeo 37, the spacecraft, was just about 51,000 miles away, and you can see some surface features. On the next Perigeo, uh, which occurred early this February, the Juno spacecraft flew within 29,000 miles, and you can see a little bit more detail here. This time around, the distance of encounter was 221 miles, and this was Incredible, but the spacecraft flying that close raced by Europa at a speed of 54,000 miles per hour. 
And Juno actually spins, it spins at a rate of two revolutions per minute. And so it was only able to capture four images of Europa as it sped by this icy moon of Jupiter. So what did the picture look like? Well, this is one of the pictures that was posted on the website. This is a raw image, so it needs some image processing. And one of the great things about the Juno Cam program is that all the images are posted on the website and the public can use their own software and process the image. So we're going to see a sampling of this. Here is one by Bjorn Johnson, who processed the image to give us a view of what Europa would look like if we could see it from the vantage point of Juno with our own eyes. This is the approximate coloration showing an icy surface with lots of crisscrosses all over the place. But there is some darker kind of brownish material covering the icy surface. And this next one is with the contrast brought all the way up and the color enhanced and you can see even more detail. And here's another one, but this was taken a little bit further away from the first image, which was roughly about 945 miles from Europa. This was taken at a distance of 1700 miles. And this is another image processed by another member of public. In this area here, you notice there are two craters and we can zoom in, we can see what they look like. They're shown there on the bottom left. So that's interesting. We haven't seen those features quite in detail before. Here's a closer look at this. So this picture was taken 945 miles away. Now that's not the closest image. There is another camera on Juno, which is called the Stellar Reference Camera. This camera is used to take images of stars and it's used to align the orientation of the spacecraft. When uh, Juno was just about 221 miles, this picture was snapped. So this is the closest and most detailed image of Europa surface that we've ever seen from this spacecraft. All of this imagery is very exciting to scientists because there's new data to study on Europa, but it also paves the way for another mission that is currently under construction. This mission is called the Europa Clipper and it's scheduled to launch in 2024 it will arrive at Europa in 2030. And this mission is for this spacecraft, Europa Clipper, to orbit around Europa about 50 times and take images of it and also take measurements. But this spacecraft will be designed to fly as close as 16 miles at its closest, just 16 <laughs> miles. Yeah. I mean, that is incredible above Europa's surface. So we're going to expect even more high resolution pictures um, well, when this mission is uh, finally on its way. So very exciting. And it's very exciting for Juno to, uh, to encounter uh, Europa and give us a close look at this fascinating icy moon of Jupiter. Yeah, that's, um, th that's one of my most anticipated missions, uh, shall we say, um, to get that close to Europa, which is, has a fascinating surface. Um, I can convince myself I'm seeing you know, ice lava flows, sort of ice volcanoes and depressions, areas where the ice has collapsed down, where I can imagine lava had sort of pooled, although the lava is frozen water, it would be an ice volcano coming up to the surface. But just the, the, the Europa Clipper is going to fill us in with so many of those details. It's just yet another, um, you know, NASA mission, JPL mission that's going to be, be wonderful.